these efforts have been quite extensive. Uh, North Korea has a, a long tradition of using hackers uh, to get into uh, cryptocurrency exchanges, into uh, bank accounts for other countries, uh, to try to get hard cash that they can use to fund a wide variety of military programs. Um, this is the same thing that you see with uh, them laundering money, them uh, selling drugs, uh, counterfeit currencies. They have a wide uh, variety of tools that they use uh, in order to fund their military since they're under pressure from sanctions. I mean, just to give you a little bit of idea of the extensiveness of this, is their GDP is only about 18 billion. Um, that's the estimate out of trading economics for 2020. And again, we're not quite sure how large the economy is, but it's, it's not very big. And so if you think about uh, the, the hack in that UN report, it's over $300 million. That's a lot of money for a small economy. Uh, same thing with cryptocurrencies. They've, they've hacked different uh, exchanges. There's one in uh, Singapore uh, that, they, um, that they hacked, and they ended up taking well over a billion dollars. So if your economy is $18 billion and you manage to generate well over a billion uh, through this illicit activity, that's, that's a good return on investment for North Korea. North Korea is under a lot of economic pressure, a lot of military pressure as well. Ever since their first nuclear test in 2006, they have been under sanctions uh, imposed by the United Nations, sanctions imposed by the United States and its allies. And these have only uh, generally increased over time. And what this means is that if you're a small economy and you're being squeezed and you can't trade on the world market the way that uh, a non-prior state could, it's very hard to make, make ends meet. And so they've found ways to go about uh, doing these illegal activities, these cyber hacks, uh, to make the amount of currency that they need to fund their programs. And for them, this is uh, fundamental, right? The nuclear deterrent is how the Kim regime, the Kim family is going to keep itself in power. It knows at the end of the day, it can't, it can't hold a candle to uh, the amount of power that the United States brings uh, to the table. And even South Korea's military is, is vastly superior to North Korea's. But again, North Korea has nuclear weapons. So from their point of view, as long as they have that ultimate deterrent, they're untouchable. So uh, this is why they constantly try to find ways to get the cash they need to fund that deterrent, because that is the one thing that keeps Kim Jong-un in power. And he knows that if he gave it up, uh, there's no guarantees that he wouldn't go the way of Saddam Hussein or Muammar Gaddafi or any number of other um, dictators who kind of sort of uh, maybe try to make things work with the West, and then suddenly they got whacked because uh, U.S. policy changed, and he does not want to go down that road. North Korea's nuclear program, uh, although very uh, rudimentary in some ways, is still uh, quite the threat. It's, it's grown over time in technological sophistication to the point to where now uh, American intelligence agencies believe that uh, those uh, nuclear missiles that North Korea has could certainly uh, hit the West Coast. They could possibly make it all the way to the East Coast, to Washington, DC, to New York City. Um, and again, you don't wanna find out, right? It is just, it's not, there's some debate about this, about how, uh, how accurate some of the weapons would be, how good some of the weapons would be. You know, you could, there's always a chance that some of these weapons, because they've not been properly tested with their, with their heat shields, that when they come back into the atmosphere, they just break apart. Um, but again, you don't want to take that chance. And so we know that uh, the United States does not want to risk a nuclear war, and certainly North Korea does not want to risk a nuclear war. But they have this as a, as a legitimate, robust deterrence that uh, America, frankly, uh, has and, and continues to take into account. Um, the last, one of the other things that I mentioned here is that Kim Jong-un is a rational actor, right? He doesn't want to uh, use these nuclear weapons um, because he knows that we would retaliate and then he, he wouldn't be around anymore, neither would his, uh, would his regime. But he has these as a way to ensure that he survives and as a way to say that, look, if you try to hurt me, then I can hold Los Angeles or I can hold Honolulu, I can hold um, you know, any, other, any number of other US cities at risk. Uh, and this goes back to again those economic that those economic pressures. Um, you know he's faced uh, he's crop failures before. He's faced the coronavirus now, uh, multiple hurricanes last year. All kinds of pressures that uh, make his regime less stable. And so for him, 
having that hard cash that he's generating through these illicit activities, building this nuclear deterrence to say no one can touch me. This is how Kim survives. This is how he stays in power.